so thank you um, for inviting me over and um, for this. And uh, so far, I've been listening to the, the other um, speakers and uh, content is amazing. So I've learned a lot and I hope you enjoy learning a little bit about Vitesse today also. And um, let's get started. So first of all, let's connect. Uh, my name is Alkin. I am joining from Istanbul, Turkey. And I'm a senior technical manager, developer advocate, and I wear some other hats as, as a Vitesse maintainer. And um, I have been um, evangelist for the open source database projects uh, before, worked at uh, Percona, Pitian, and I also have a very uh, long list of enterprise background, uh, working in very large uh, corporations like Bank of America, AT&T, and so on and so forth. And, uh, and I'm also one of the MySQL SMEs. Um, and um, I am uh, also um, an avid sailor. And uh, if you want to talk, if anybody wants to talk about uh, sailing, please do find me. And uh, hope to sail one day to Africa also. That would be an amazing trip. <laughs> So uh, I'm on, on LinkedIn and Twitter for my business accounts. And uh, if you uh, want to connect, ask questions before or after, during, later, um, and uh, any ideas later on, and uh, you can connect and ask questions uh, or, or interact with me. A little bit about my employer. It was founded by um, the co-creators of Vitesse. So our subject is Vitesse, the project is Vitesse, and the Planet Scale was, was uh, founded by co-creators. Uh, of Vitesse at YouTube, and uh, YouTube became Google, and and um, and and we became a Planet Scale. So we're a little over fifty employees, maybe a little over that, and um, located in in California, in the United States. But with the pandemic, we are hundred percent remote team. As you can see, I'm from Istanbul, and uh, we provide uh, services on on cloud database um, cloud database offering. So. Um, Today's agenda will be, I want to uh, introduce Vitesse. Okay, um, so um, we were going to talk about Vitesse architecture basics, and then we're going to put uh, together the puzzle together, okay? And um, basically, Vitesse wants to um, enable transparent database infra infrastructure for the applications that you're actually going to point. And um, it has its own terminology, which is slightly different because it's a different, uh, um, then the database in the back end, it's a, it's a framework that sits on top of a database, in this case, MySQL. So we call it a, a, a database, logical database, the key space. And then, and then the reason for that is we're not going to go in too much detail, but because it's a sharded implementation or designed for sharding of the database, it actually um, has a key space concept with a key space ID. There's a primary. Windex and and the Windex uh, settings into that. So there's a VT gate, and uh, that's a proxy server. VT tablet, and then we have a topology manager. So we're going to look into these a little bit. So you have um, consider a common replication cluster. You have a replicated cluster. Usually, it's actually um, a one primary and then multiple replicas uh, behind it. So VT tablet sits in into these. The, to, to this very a common scenario of MySQL implementation with a primary and, uh, and the replicas around it. So VT tablet is a, like a daemon, a sidecar, and it controls the MySQL D, MySQL server. It inter interacts with the MySQL server, and usually we place them on the same server where the um, MySQL sits. Um, but in, in, in large scale, database implementations, you will have multiple clusters. And then to be able to drive these multiple clusters, you will actually have some sort of a proxy server. So Vitesse comes with a built-in proxy server that is called VTGate. And it's a stateless proxy. It is, it is stateless, but it's smart. It speaks the MySQL protocol. Also, it does connection pooling, caching, and some other stuff. And and it, it, it acts like a monolith MySQL database in the back end. Basically, you connect to the VT gate, you connect like a, a connected like to a, a, a database, standalone database in the back end. But in reality, you will have n number of custom uh, clusters and n number of servers that are acting as primary and replicas behind the scenes. So it relays the queries to VT tablets. 
So the, in very, very large implementation, then you will have multiple VT gates pointing to the multiple clusters behind the scenes. And this is how the very large shops like GitHub or uh, we'll, we'll get to that. So we, we, to get to the VT gate, you also have the application that's pointing to the VT gate and, and it needs to know where the data sits. So the idea behind this is, as you can see in this example, we have a commerce database, which is sharded. Uh, it's probably sharded by a customer ID or a product ID. Uh, it depends on the scenario. We'll talk about that a little bit, but uh, then you can also have an internal uncharted database. So the application pointing to the, to the uh, VT gate knows where the shard is. So this is the Vitesse. So this, this is what we can achieve with Vitesse. Uh, architecture, given the uh, you know the simple example of uh, select uh, order ID price from orders and equals to four, it knows where that shard is. So usually, um, sharding is a very complex um, terminology in the databases, but usually you shard by uh, the key ID, which is in, in this case customer ID, and then you split up depending on your how big is your cluster, and then you have smaller set of clusters behind the seas instead of having the largest host uh, or largest instances of the implementation that's going to serve your database traffic. So also there is another component called, we call it a topo, but it's a topology server. It's a distributed key value store. And usually it's implementations that we, we, we have is etcd, console or zookeeper. So these are also other open source utilities that you can integrate into uh, we test with a topology manager. And then topology is required for uh, keeping this uh, information about, okay, where this, the shard is, where is, the, uh, where is this um, schema sits? And then, and then VTGaze knows that information. It exchanges that information with the, with the topology server. And then it actually makes, a, uh, makes it serving. So um, the, the key value store, is another data store, of course. Um, why are we keeping that? Because these are known and, and, and proven, proven technologies to keep this type of information, to keep this type of data, uh, data. So they are redundantly served within the same uh, data center or, or other data centers that is distributed. So, so there is another component in the Vitesse architecture is it called the VTCTLD, which actually controls the topology in overall, so, so you have multiple components that controlling the, uh, the, the architecture, but, um, but basically it allows this, this operation, operation of the tablets and the topology server uh, keeping a consistent state of things, how things are. So it sounds a little bit complex, but it's, it's pretty straightforward when we come to that. So it's, it's, uh, Vitesse knows what's happening with your schemas, shards, and clusters, including the server roles. Uh, when we say a server role, I mentioned about like the uh, having the primary and the, and the replicas. So so some of the the replicas are are read only. Some of the replicas are 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 for serving for other purposes. Then you can actually set those um, readable or writable um, flags, and then and then we test will know what to do about those. So. If you look at it uh, in, in summary, um, Vitesse control plane includes a proxy server, a backup and recovery, recovery operations. It does an integrated failover. It can use the uh, third party tool, another open source tool like Orchestrator. Um, it, 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 it does the, the sharding, of course, that's the, one of the strengths of it, but it also comes with an advanced replication called vReplication or vStream. So what that means is, you can migrate data within or outside of the Vitesse cluster uh, using the vReplication technologies. This is like binary logging um, and streaming, and then it actually applying to correct nodes. So why this is important for Vitesse? Uh, it is because of the, the bullet point about it's a sharding schemes because normally if you shard, it's, it's you're stuck with that sharding. And then when you tra start, uh, serving traffic off of that those sharding uh, methodology, you can't actually change that. With Vitesse, you can. You can do the resharding. Let's say your key change, your schema change, your 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 application um, has changed, and you can actually reshard and then change 
and maybe you actually you know scaled for 16 clusters and you want to do 32 clusters because your business is booming you can actually do this live with a very uh, small like split second uh, failover using Vitesse. So you serve the traffic, you reshard while applying the changes to the new uh, shard, and then and then you say, okay, cut over. It'll cut over with a, with a minimal effect uh, to the application. The application may or may not even notice that. So it also you can also do a online DDL management. This is very um, a hot topic in the database world because when you do a, a locking operation then your replicas get behind and then you have other issues and and we're talking about very large implementations like youtube uh, github and other places so these are even more uh, problematic so vitesse can actually help you overcome these obstacles and there's more so uh, in a picture just to just to remind everyone and um, hopefully we're doing very good in on time to, um, to show you. So we have an application server that's pointing to load balancer and then load balancer points to, to VT gates and that's actually serving sharded or uncharted clusters. In the meantime, Vitesse actually owns a topology server, the topo server, and then VTCTLD component to, the, to do the cluster management. So this is a, a summary of Vitesse architecture. Again, this is completely open source. All these components on the right hand side over, he over here, you can actually see the code in GitHub. And uh, again, this code is, is owned by CNCF basically. And, uh, and then uh, you can read what's actually, what, what, what is actually behind the scenes. So I'm stoked about that. Um, supported backend databases, uh, we do support MySQL. Vitesse is very MySQL centric implementation. We can say that uh, clearly, and and adopters are are very MySQL uh, focused uh, shops. So MySQL 5.7, 80 are supported. MariaDB were supported until 10.3, and 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 um, we don't have extensive experience or or user base in MariaDB. Just as a side, there are no implementations. Uh, um, pointing Vitesse into Postgres, but uh, it's not on the roadmap for this year. Maybe it will come depending on the contributions uh, coming up from, from that, those communities. Um, it may be a possibility, but at this point, that is not uh, the case. So we're gonna talk about a little bit, uh, very sh uh, briefly about the use cases. So when I have a Vitesse, do I actually have the shard? No, you don't have the actual shard, you can still uh, do uncharted implementation, and if you think you, you will, you will hit some sort of a, a scaling uh, issues in the future that will prepare you for for scaling. And um, so, management of MySQL topology, yes, if you put it behind the uh, Vitesse, Vitesse does its own management with the VT tablets topology. It knows where things are. It gives you other tooling, other command line tools uh, to do. Like let's say uh, you want to do reparenting. Normally, you have to do like change master to and then typing commands, find uh, the coordinates of the uh, master, and then you know uh, fail over to that and cut over the application. This all all of that you can contain it with a simple command, uh, with a maybe simple shortcut within within Vitesse world. So so it because because Vitesse knows which one is a primary, which one is a replica, and the primary is no good, or you want to do a maintenance on it, you want to you want to assign. One of the one of the replicas as a primary on that cluster you can give one command uh, just with their tablet id and it'll it'll be done so Vitesse also is very open source friendly as an open source tool we mentioned about uh backup and recovery so extra backup is a, is an online uh, hot backup utility very known by the Percona toolkit it's part of the Percona toolkit and it's supported by by Vitesse. so large databases having to back up and restored and 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 implement it it will be um, a very you know wise thing to do a pt online schema change again is a percona toolkit utility to do the online schema ch changes and and uh, github uh, online schema uh, transfers is a ghost utility by github these are all already built into uh, vitesse so you actually can just set the DDL strategy and then run it. It'll, it'll basically drive these open source utilities um, along with the Vitesse operations. So see the other one is an orchestrator. That's an, a high availability and a failover uh, cluster management utility. VTORC, we call it, is, a, is a still in progress. It's experimental. It works. Um, I have a talk in Parkona Live in May 12th and, and, and um, 13th. 
if I'm not mistaken by the date, and um, and then um, there's there's a, uh, going to be some representation of that also. So uh, we talked about online schema uh, change utilities, but also um, there is a way to do this in um, migration style within the Vitesse. So we are very excited about this technology because this V replication can actually make schema changes while you're serving the data and then you can flip over to that schema when you're ready. So um, you, there's a link over here. I will share the slides. So um, do some reading about if you think you have a large cluster and then you will hit some scalability issues and how do I do online schema changes? Uh, we test maybe uh, your option to uh, help over there. So the other thing is uh, we we talk. It's an experimental. Uh, there is a development ongoing, but but the orchestrator itself is an amazing tool. If you haven't heard about it, uh, managing as a SRE or a, or a DBA, um, uh, it's a very uh, de facto uh, utility for for um, topology management and, and a high availability solution. So it has a smart settings and it can fail over if it detects uh, lags or, or other other um, flags and uh, and it's it's useful so we are actually planning to integrate more into this uh, to the Vitesse so who uses Vitesse we, I mentioned I happen to mention github already but uh, one of our um, uh, Early adopter is, is Slack. As you know, Slack is very popular and, and Slack needed to scale. During the pandemic, they have grown uh, extremely and, and they are like, uh, uh, at the time of this slide, maybe it was 99.9% .9 or they migrated completely serving all traffic using Vitesse. Uh, so um, you think about um, a Slack, Slack implementation, every customer ID uh, needs to be have its own space and then you're scaling uh, you know, uh, that's that's a very uh, good example. There's a Square, it's an online transaction, there's Pinterest, there's GitHub, HubSpot, uh, there's more uh, adopters uh, in, 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 in that. Uh, some, of, uh, some of them are very large shops, and some of them are, are, are going to be growing into expecting an exponential growth in the coming uh, months or years. So um, that is the case over here. All right, so... Uh, we are uh, doing good on time. So I want to touch base on, on data on Kubernetes. So every DBA, including myself, maybe like uh, when the Kuber Kubernetes came or the cloud came, well, the cloud's going to add a latency on it. Then then the um, containers came. And while the, the containers aren't, uh, you know, consistent data stores and, and they're, they're not persistent, they're not meant to for serving production traffic, um, you know, I remember reading, you know, it was when, when Docker came out on, on the Docker's homepage, do not use this in production. And uh, and then now it's Kubernetes. And, and the Kubernetes community is growing probably faster than anything else. And data on Kubernetes is 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 doable. So I I am I'm here to I am here to say it is it is doable and it's it's also a growing community. There are other uh, graduated projects, check out the CNCF. Um, um, doing um, Kubernetes, uh, data on Kubernetes, actually. So who needs the data on Kubernetes? So you, if, if you're like what I'm hearing from the community and the, and the, and the prospects or the clients uh, that I, we have uh, today and in the past, like whoever act actually already migrated into microservices, uh, containers, on-premise or in the cloud, so this is, uh, they are already becoming a Kubernetes shop and they want to keep it Kubernetes side by side with their data. So that actually makes sense. Uh, but, but how do we do that? So uh, MySQL in Kubernetes itself is, is uh, if you look at outside of the box, MySQL wasn't designed for um, this type of operation because it, it's a very consistent asset data store, right? So, so you actually, uh, MySQL is MySQL internally actually keeps a very consistent um, data, uh, and 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 it serves the data if only it's consistent. And uh, and um, so MySQL provides high availability, and and works with persistent storage. It does backup and recovery. So so you can do you can 
all orchestrate this in in Kubernetes using uh, with with MySQL. But we test on Kubernetes actually predates the Kubernetes. So this is an interesting fact over here that um, the release of Vitesse, because this all born in, in, in Google, and the release of Vitesse was, you know, and, and uh, initial release of Kubernetes came. Um, so by nature, Vitesse is actually very Kubernetes friendly implementation from day one, even, um, you know, T minus day before, before day one. And uh, the mindset of, of the framework, the, the skeleton, the, the, the code set, code base is actually a Kubernetes friendly. So well, how do I run Vitesse on Kubernetes? If that's, that's my next question, right? You could either build your own because it's a Go uh, product, right? You can compile and embed it into your Kubernetes uh, orchestration. Uh, initially, uh, we've heard a lot of uh, the Helm charts. There are still shops using Helm charts. Uh, I don't have any uh, personal opinion against Helm charts, but there's a caveat using Helm charts because they are very specific to individual implementation. So when we first uh, implemented Helm charts for Vitesse, even for, for testing, it, it, it quickly became obsolete. It became outdated very quickly. So if you were to do Helm charts your own, Vitesse will still work in Kubernetes. But what I think is, is the best option is the operator. So uh, Vitesse, Vitesse uh, has its own open source operator by Planet Scale, and, uh, and, and that is the best uh, place to start with. So uh, what other uh, MySQL implementations are doing for the uh, Kubernetes, there's a Percona implementation. This is not included with Vitesse, but that's more extra DB cluster implementation. It's a, it's the, a consistent cluster. Uh, keeping multiple replicas a consistent way. That's an extra DB. I don't know if you ever heard about it. There is a press labs implementation of, of the MySQL and, and uh, there's a Vitesse operator and, uh, and there are some others uh, and, and more others are coming. If you look at the operators, operators world are the key for uh, success in Kubernetes. So, and I also have a um, um, Vitesse operator for Kubernetes blog post. And that is a good way if you're interested in Kubernetes, if you're interested in, in operators and you want to try some data source like MySQL and Vitesse, uh, this is a good, good example of representation uh, and uh, of the, and that's what I, I thought of, uh, thought of um, giving an example over here uh, because if I were to run this, this we won't have enough time for it. So um, where do I get information about Vitesse? So we have Vitesse IO. And there's like a, lots of docs. There are examples getting started pages. Um, there's a contributor guide if you want to contribute for uh, the Vitesse project. And uh, we have a Vitesse Slack. And uh, that is the best place to ask questions specifically about Vitesse. Uh, your, your experience, if you run into issues, understanding any issues, because we have uh, maintainers in the Slack. And 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 watching this space, and then we get we get help uh, around the community about about uh, uh, the Vitesse. And uh, thank you very much. And um, my Twitter handle is over here. I'm also on GitHub, LinkedIn, and um, that uh, was my presentation about Vitesse. Hopefully, we did good on time. Yeah, yeah, we are solidly on time. Wow, that, that was an awesome presentation thanks a lot okay um and I'm, I'm glad you also added some useful links on the slides as well so definitely um we'll definitely share the slides um if it pleases you so we'll share the slides with the attendees uh, um, immediately after this session so yeah um this is the time for q and a if you have any questions please feel free to Put it out there on the chat section. Okay, uh, let's see. If you're streaming live, feel free to also ask your questions on the YouTube chats as well. Um, yeah, let's maybe let's give maybe a minute and see if we get any questions from attendees.
Um, I think we have none. Okay. Well, thank you very much for organizing and inviting us over, and appreciate all the all the great work that you did this uh, community days in Africa. Hopefully, uh, I'll get to see you in Africa someday. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That would be amazing. That, After yeah. the pandemic, all right. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, thanks a lot for coming. All right, thank uh, you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, see you some other time.